I'm going to blow your mind with this. I'm going to show you how you can be wrong more than right and make more profits. Yes, that's right. Imagine it, making more profits by being wrong. I'm going to show you what this means for you. But first, we have to talk about risk reward profile, win rate and all this stuff. And, and what are we talking about? So everybody understands, because I don't know who's in the event. Some of you may be like, oh, I've heard this before. Well, some people are new and they don't maybe know. What is a win rate? Well, that is the percentage that you are correct to your first in profit target. Whether you're trading a single or multi target position, we're going to just keep it as that first target. What's how many, often does the market go to your target and execute the order? Right, and you can do this in back testing. You just record the, the result. Did the price make it to my target, yes or no? And that's your win rate to your first target. Because then you might either be out of the trade, if it's a single target, or if it's a multi target position like we discussed, you might do some trade management and move the stop loss to break even, let's say, or maybe even trail stop. So the win rate after that is not really that important because the trade is basically free money, right? You're, you're at break even. Yes, it's a market order, but you're protecting all that risk and removing it mostly from the table. And then you just have your target, whatever that's going to be. So your win rate is mostly focused on that first initial target, whether that's single target, because that's all you got, or because after that, you're going to manage the trade and it's not going to matter much what the win rate is after that. Now you can track it, but it's not going to matter as much. It's about how often do you get that target versus hit your stop loss for a full loss, right? That's what we're talking about. Okay. Now leverage. Okay. What is that? Now non-leverage markets, what are those? Stocks, for example. Some water here. One tick or 0 0.01 is one cent in dollars or 0 0.01, right? Dollars. This is a one-to-one -one relationship. There is no leverage. Now they can give you, loan you money. That's another matter. Now leverage markets like Forex or futures or other things like that are quite a bit different. One pip or tick in this type of market in Forex specifically is 10 cents approximately for a micro lot, $1 for a mini lot, and $10 for a standard lot. Okay, now that's those are the basic levels. And some brokers will let you have uh, different amounts in between there. Some are very uh, static, just at the, the main micro, mini, and standard levels. So micro is, is 1,000, mini is 10,000 units of that currency pair, and standard is 100,000 units. I say units because, you know, it depends on what currency pair you're trading. Just call them contracts. This is the total cost per pip, and it's going to vary by position size, or like I said, the number of lots or contracts traded. Okay, but per one, these are the costs associated, right? So I have 10 pips at a micro lot. One micro lot is 10 cents times 10 is a dollar, right? Pretty simple, not hard to understand. Now, Forex leverage examples, they're different ones, 10, 20, 50, 100, right? Now, the more leverage you have, the less margin or cash they will take out of your account for any given trade. What does that mean? Well, that means you can trade higher position sizes with less money. But is that a good thing? Probably not, because someone will pop in a $500 account and trade one standard lot. And they obviously don't have a plan, and then all of a sudden they trade one, one trade and their account's gone. All right, so that can be dangerous, so just understand what that's about and how it works. So when we talk about risk reward, leverage markets like Forex or futures, pretty much the same. The risk is the amount of pips or ticks to your initial stop loss. This is where you're gonna get out if you're wrong. I say, I'm wrong here, I'm gonna exit the market for my trade, okay? That's your risk. Now we're looking at pips and ticks, not the money, because it's a leveraged market. We need to work with consistent variables here. We need to work with consistent units because the position size is all relative, right? You can trade whatever you want, any number of micro minis or standard lots. So we have to look at is, well, how many pips am I risking and what's my reward? Well, obviously the reward is the opposite, right? The amount of pips, your first in profit target, this is where you're gonna get out if you're right, okay? Now, what's a risk reward ratio? What's well, obviously the comparison between those two, between your risk and reward. Now it's a ratio. For example, if I have 10 pips of risk, 20 pips of reward, I have a one to two risk reward profile, right? Pretty simple. That's a ratio of one to two. You can have one to one, one to two, one to three, one to four. You can have inverted risk rewards. Now risk reward is independent of position size, okay? You must understand this, I already said it, but it's independent because these are leveraged markets when you look at the pips or ticks at risk, and then we look at money separately, okay? So we looked at this graphic, uh, I think Greystone put it up. So here's basically the same thing. We have our risk reward, we have our uh, win rate, and you see the green part, okay? 
that's profitable land. That's where I want to go. And we notice that there's a relationship here, okay, between risk reward and win percentage. Okay. Okay. It's pretty simple. So that's that's the basic idea. You've seen it already, so I won't spend much time. Let's go to a spreadsheet. I'm gonna show you, find the right one here, how this works. You guys see that? Oops. Was maximized. There we go. Can you guys see the uh, spreadsheet? Now this is just a spreadsheet that I made. Nothing fancy. Just to illustrate the, the point here about what we're what we're talking about. So our win rate is here up on the top left, 50%. Okay, we have our risk reward profile as well, one to one. That's pretty simple. And I based it on 100 trades. Why 100 trades? Well, this is what we want to look at when it comes to back testing. That's 100 trades per uh, market per strategy on the market. Your your entry method. Okay, or the way that you're analyzing the market and then executing a trade. Different strategies, different testing, okay? And you do that per, per every market and with that specific strategy or trade plan that you've got, and you'd want to test 100 trades on all of them. Or if we're talking about, that would be more like active trading, maybe day trading. If we're looking at swing trading, we go with 100 trades, but it might be better to go with five to 10 years, okay? Five to 10 years worth of historical data. And we're looking at an average loss, so again, our one-to-one. -one. We're going to go with 10 pips just to make it simple. Risk 10 to make 10. I risk 10 to make 10. Our gross loss then, of course, is minus 500 based on the 100 trades. Gross profit is 500. You guys get it. Simple math. And, of course, we have nothing because our risk-reward is one-to-one, -one, and we're no better than a coin flip at this point, 50%, right? Everybody man flipping the coin when you're in grade school, teaching about probabilities and math and all that? Flip the coin, 50%, heads or tails, right? You're no better than a coin flip. Not basically chance, <laughs> right? You have, you know, that's it. So if you can do that, let's look at this. So let's compare 80% at a one-to-one -one risk reward. Well, there we go. Now we have net profits of 600 right here. 600 net profit pips or ticks, whatever kind of market you're in. Now that's a high win rate. Now that might be hard to do, right? You're gonna have to have extra filters. You're gonna have to be really good at what you do. You might even uh, require an inverted risk reward in order, to, in order to achieve such a high win rate. You might need to have, you know, 0.5 or 0.75 on your reward side, and that will be inverted, right? You risk more than you stand to make, but the win percentage takes over. I think I can put a decimal in here. I can. See, it's still profitable. What about 0.75? Still profitable, right? Changes a bit. But with that high win rate, you're likely going to be left with an inverted risk reward. Maybe that's fine with you because you want to be right more often. Your psychology is not as good, so you need to be right more often. Okay, well, let's roll with this. Let's say we want a 1-2 risk reward and a 65% win rate. Well, we jumped up to 950 now. We went from 600 pips or ticks to 950 pips. But Charles, I'm less right. Win percentage went down, yeah? But my reward is more. I'm risking 10 to make 20. Make sense? Everybody tracking? Okay. And you're like, man, I'm just not good at trading, Charles. I don't think I could even make 65%. I don't think. That means I can't be successful. Well, let's see. Let's go with 40% in a 1, 2, 4, 1,000 net pips. So we went from 600 to 950 to 1,000. Are we more right? No. We are less right, which means we're what? Worse at picking trades. Well, that's just as, that's the best our strategy can do. And what you'll find is that this is a balancing act, like I said on the graphic, right? As reward goes up, win percentage goes down. As reward goes down, win percentage can go up. You might hit it more often. So what you need to do, especially when you first start trading, is figure out where can you sit psychologically. Now, you're going to get great, better at this, right? You'll get better, of course. We don't have to stay here. But where can I be to get started. Well, I would say, you know, if you can go with a 50%, that's no better than flipping a coin. That's basically chance. Now, surely with a little bit of skill, a little bit of coaching and teaching, you can do 50%, right? And just give yourself some room. One to three, one to two reward. Risk 10 to make 20, miss 10, risk 10 to make 30. And then those, vary, those numbers can vary, the PIP amount. I just chose easy numbers, right? You could be 15 to make, you know, 30. And it may depend on how you define your stop loss. Do you is it a fixed PIP amount or you do a dynamic, you know, ATR method or use something else? All right, there's all kinds of things that you could use. Okay. So it's just a ratio. It's all about the ratio. Not about the number itself. Everybody understand? Okay, isn't that amazing that you can add